Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the perturbation lemma for linear factorizations. Um, the perturbation lemma in general is a really powerful um, technical result with, with lots of applications, um, which is summarized in a paper that I'm linking in my notes to this talk. Um, and sort of roughly speaking, it's a tool that allows us to, to modify the differentials of homotopy equivalent um, linear, factoriz linear factorizations in our case, or in other more general cases of homotopy equivalent uh, chain and co-chain complexes. Um, and to do this without disturbing the, the equivalence. Um, so usually this result is stated for, for chain complexes in an abelian category or chain complexes of, of um, R modules over a commutative ring R. Um, but this result readily extends to, to linear factorizations. Um, uh, and I've got the analogous, so in my notes, I won't go through it today, but in my notes, I've got statements um, that are the analogous statements to the ones I'll go through today for, for chain complexes in an abelian category. Um, so to start out, so for the whole talk, uh, let S be a uh, commutative ring. and uh, R and S module. Um, and the first thing we're gonna be defining is uh, the type of, of homotopy equivalent, uh, the type of homotopy equivalences of linear factorizations that uh, the perturbation lemma is, is gonna work on. Okay, and we're gonna call that a, uh, a deformation retract. Um, so definition. Um, so for uh, linear factorizations um, L and uh, M. Um, linear factorizations, or say, of F in R. Um, uh, a deformation retract. And I'll abbreviate this. I'll abbreviate this as dr um, uh, over over s um, between L and M uh, consists of the following s linear map la maps. Um, okay, so we have the linear factorization L here, and we have a linear, we have a S linear map going uh, over to to M, and then we also have an S linear map going back from M to L, uh, and then we also have this other <laughs> this other map H off to the side. Um, and this is subject to, to the following conditions. So where uh, PI, so going from M along P and then back to back to M along I, uh, where that gives you the identity on M. Uh, I'm not clear about the role of R so far. So the linear factorizations of if, uh, so you mean R is an S algebra, I guess. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yep. That's yeah. That's my mistake. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, and these these linear factorizations are of some element of um, F in R, which which might not be in in the image of uh, the structure. The, the this this thing might not be in S, right? Might be uh, only in R. Um, okay, so so this thing is the identity. Um, the the map IP uh, is is homotopic to the identity via H. So so that means that uh, IP minus one is equal to H DM plus DM H. <clears throat> uh, okay, and and that's that what that's what constitutes a, a deformation retract. Um, uh, and we'll I'll refer to this by by sort of this squiggle. Um, we call 
star strong. So we might call a strong deformation retract an SDR. Um, if we also have, if also we have uh, HI equals zero, uh, PH equals zero, and H squared equal to zero. Okay. Um, and okay, so that's the that's the end of the definition. Um, and uh, a strong deformation retract is a, a special type of uh, homotopy equivalence of linear factorizations. So, so not all uh, obviously not all homotopy equivalent linear linear factorizations are related by a uh, a strong deformation retract. But if there's a strong deformation retract between two complexes, then those two com uh, sorry between two linear factorizations, then those two linear factorizations are homotopy. Uh, are, are equivalent in the homotopy category. Um, okay, so we're now going to move on and talk about uh, what we're going to do to these these uh, strong deformation retracts. So we call this this process sort of perturbation. Um, so moving along to the second board, um, we'll define uh, perturbation um, of star. So still working in the context of of the previous definition um, is uh, an odd R linear. Oh, sorry. So that should be an odd S linear uh, uh, map, map, say, delta from M to M. Uh, such that uh, dm plus uh, delta squared is equal to uh, g1, where g is some element of, uh, of r. Yep. <clears throat> um, and... Uh, Uh, and a perturbation, oops, is called small if uh, one minus delta h is invertible. Um, okay. Um, so the condition for, for invertibility of this thing is frequently checked, uh, using, using the follow following lemma, which I'll quickly state and prove now. Um, so lemma, um, a perturbation is small. Also, I'm going to prove one direction of this because we actually only uh, need one direction of it, um, if and only if. So we'll be proving the if direction. Um, uh, delta h to the n is equal to zero uh, for some n uh, large enough. <clears throat> okay, and uh, proof. So. It, uh, if so, I'll, I'll prove the uh, the one direction only. So if uh, delta h n is equal to zero, uh, then one can show that the the inverse that this inverse is equal to this sum okay there. okay. Um, and uh, I've got a, a reference to, to where the converse is explained um, in my notes. Uh, we just we don't really need the result, and we sort of don't have time to go into it. Um, cool. Um, were there any questions uh, so far, or is everything everything clear? Not for me. Okay. Um, okay. So. With that, then we'll move on to the statement of the the perturbation lemma. Uh, so we'll do that on the on the third board. 
Um, okay, so so in order to do that, so so we'll also introduce the following notation. So let let phi um, from S to R um, be the morphism of rings associated to the S algebra structure on R. So that's, I think that's often called the, the structure morphism. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll, so we'll use that to, to indicate that and then we'll set the, per the perturbation lemma, so theorem. Um, okay, so perturbation lemma. So suppose uh, we have a strong, I'll use my abbreviation, a strong deformation retract um, over S uh, of uh, linear factorizations of some element in the image of this, this structure morphism, right? So this is in R, not that one. Um, and we'll denote that by, so it'll be again, we'll have L, DL, uh, I, P, M, and H, uh, and let delta be a, a small perturbation. Of uh, this thing. Um, <clears throat> okay, then, then, uh, the perturbed data, this is sometimes called, consisting of L, um, a new map DL prime, a new map I, and a new map P, an M, and then the original DM plus uh, our perturbation delta, and then a new H. Uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, so in this case, our small perturbation is going to be such that dm plus g squared is equal to, oops, sorry, dm plus delta squared is equal to g. Uh, and G is in image of S. Um, okay, so I was halfway through defining this perturbed data. So, so this perturbed data is uh, a strong deformation retract where um, DL prime is equal to the original differential on L um, plus the original PAI. Uh, sorry, I should also state so. A is uh, 1 minus delta H inverse delta. Um, sorry, Ryan, you said you wrote something incorrect on that first board. Uh, you have PI equals the identity on M. Maybe you also said that out loud, but uh, P after I is the identity on L. Oh, yep. Want, want to maybe you mislabeled the arrows. I, I don't know which way you want it, but. Um, yep, yeah, that should be that should be the identity on. So this is correct, and uh, which obviously means that this should be L. Cool. Yep. Yeah. That's that should be good. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Okay, so back to defining this this perturbed data. Um, uh, so then I prime is going to be the original I plus uh, H A I. Um, P prime is going to be the original P plus P A H. And then H prime is equal to H plus H A H. Okay, so that's the that's the statement of the, the perturbation lemma. So in in summary, right, we start out with this strong we start out with this strong deformation retract um, of linear factorizations of of f, uh, and then we take a small perturbation of this strong deformation retract, right? And this small perturbation is such that um, when we when we apply this perturbation, you know, when we add this in to this this differential here, then we get we also get some element g, which is part of the, which is sort of part of s. It's part of the image of this this structure morphism. And then what the what the lemma is is claiming, or what the lemma is asserting, is that that we actually then have a strong deformation retract uh, where we can put this differential on the left hand side. So we're allowed to mix in this this new perturbation. So we can think about this as starting with an original strong deformation retract and then modifying this differential by by adding in some, some small perturbation, which we get to choose, um, to produce another uh, strong deformation retract between, well, the same the same underlying modules of the linear factorization, but uh, sort of new, new maps and new differentials, which now square to a new uh, object, uh, a new element G. Okay, is that all? Is that all clear? Yep. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so the proof of this is sort of is sort of long. So I was thinking, I think it's maybe best to then. So rather than immediately launching into the proof, the next thing I'm going to state is going to be a uh, sort of a corollary of the perturbation lemma, um, which shows how we're actually going to going to use the perturbation lemma um, when we're defining. LG, and then I'll go back and start working through the proof of the perturbation lemma, and I guess we'll sort of see how far how far we get. Um, okay, so so I'll do that now. Um, <clears throat> so okay, so the way we sort of use the perturbation lemma is it's sort of um, we can use it to to tensor over over strong deformation retracts. So. So by that I mean the following. So lemma. Um, so again, we have a ring S. We have an R, an R, an S algebra, um, and uh, linear factorizations uh, of the sum of some so of some element of the structure mor morphism. So say dm and uh, oh, sorry, we have L and M. As above, um, and uh, suppose we have we have uh, strong deformation retract again, um, then. For any linear factorization um, of uh, say G in R, where F plus G is in delta S is in uh, this thing, um, there exists a strong deformation retract um, between the following linear factorizations. Uh, so we have this module here. So the tensor product over R of L and Z. Um, and then for the differential, we have, uh, whoops, we have DL tensor one plus uh, one tensor DZ. Um, 
Um, and on the other side, I'm rapidly running out of room. And then we have our other map H, right? <clears throat> um, uh, over S, right? Okay. So, so what this is saying is, well, okay, if we have a if we have a strong deformation retract, then we're allowed to tensor uh, both sides by um, uh, we're allowed to tensor both sides of this strong deformation retract by any other module um, by any other linear factorization z, and then mix in its differential on both sides as well, um, as long as this thing ends up. Uh, you know, being being linear with respect to S. Um, okay, so uh, I might prove this back on the the first board. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> okay, so. Um, so if we if we tensor on both sides of the strong deformation retract by the module z, uh, we get uh, the following. We get a strong deformation retract. Okay, um, and then the point that we at, the, at which we use the perturbation lemma. Um, so again, we get H tensor one here, um, and then the point at which we use the the perturbation lemma is uh, is that we show uh, that uh, one. Uh, That one delta uh, d dz is a uh, small perturbation. Okay, so in order to show that, uh, we need to show. So we need one minus one tensor dz to be invertible. Um, but the, the inverse of this is given by, uh, oops, sorry, it should be, it should be H here, right? Um, yeah. Um, so we need this to be invertible, but then the inverse of this is just, uh, is just, uh, one, well, it's just, let's do the calculation. Right, so we get um, uh, we get uh, one here, and then we get um, oh, what's going on, uh, and then we get minus. Um, oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah, totally makes sense. And then we get h squared here, and then dz squared here, right? Um, but we're assuming this is a this is a strong deformation retract, which in, in particular means that h squared is equal to zero, right? Um, so then that ends up being being, whoops, <laughs> not that, but then that ends up being just the identity, right? And then you can also show that uh, one minus h tensor z 
1 plus h tensor z uh, is also equal to the identity, right? So that exactly shows uh, that, that that thing is a, uh, is a strong deformation retract, right? Sorry, that this thing is a is a small perturbation, right? I have a very tiny quibble. Uh, mm -hmm. When you do h tensor dz composed with h tensor dz, when you move the dz past the h, since they're both odd, you pick up a minus sign. Now that's the rule for composing tensor products of operators that have um, potentially non-zero degree. So that's actually oh, yeah. one. One plus h squared tensor dz squared, but it's zero, so that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah, that always tripped me up. I always forget the the greater tensor product. Um, yeah, cool. Um, okay, great. So that's a small perturbation. Um, so then, then we can just we can just mix in this differential, right? So so let's do that on the on the next board. Okay, so so we mix in the differential. So on the right hand side, sorry, on the left hand side, we have this thing, um, and then uh, what does the uh, the lemma say? It says we get um, what's happening? Oh, there we go. It says we get the L. Oops. Tensor one, so our original differential plus uh, PAI. And then we have uh, some other maps here, which I won't bother naming. Uh, and then we have uh, M tensor R Z um, uh, DL, uh, sorry, D M tensor one plus one tensor D Z. Okay. Um, and then uh what what was the next step uh we need to show i haven't I written this down <laughs> um so we need to show that p a i we want this to be equal to uh one tensor d z um So, uh, so I guess maybe that's a bit confusing. This should really be um, p tensor one, right? Because we're modifying the not the statement of the deformation, not the deformation retract stated in the lemma, but the, the sort of the new one we came up with. Uh, and then a, so a is. Um, <clears throat> A is one minus uh, our perturbation um, with H tensor one here, right? Is inverse, right? Uh, and then uh, I here is I tensor one, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> and then, well, the thing to note, right, is that, well, uh, well, this is a plus here because, and we can get rid of that because uh, we showed that that was the inverse. And then what we end up with is PI here uh, and then uh, plus or maybe maybe minus <laughs> H A uh, I feel like what's going has something gone wrong here.
Hmm. It should be P. So that's one. So that's that's one right. tensor one plus uh, pH tens PHI tensor DZ possibly with some sign. Uh, And pH should assume is zero. Oh yeah, okay. So that is zero, and then that ends up as yeah, just one. Is that what we wanted to show? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh right, because this is oh no. Hmm. So, so what are you what are you trying to prove here? We want this this P A uh we want this thing here to end up as as one tensor DZ, right? Mm -hmm. Um but that's uh, not what we what we end up with. Hmm. Yeah, I think this calculation is correct, so I... Uh, so the A is by the previous board, right? That's the 1 minus H tensor DZ inverse. Uh, yeah, so A should be... Uh, let me write it down. should be one minus delta H. Ah, oh. there, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, yep, so we need, sorry about that, everyone watching, or well, if anyone's watching this. Um, so uh, we need another map in here. Uh, this isn't this isn't a. This is just part of a. So this should be one tensor dz again in here, which puts uh, one tensor dz out here, which gives us one tensor <laughs> dz. Oh, all is well. You, my, my entire thesis isn't completely <laughs> bogus. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so that proves uh, that lemma, I believe, right? So we end up with um, a strong deformation retract uh, between these these new um, these new uh, linear factorizations where we've where we've tensed over um, the modules in both in both linear factorizations, and we've also mixed in uh, the the differential of this new linear factorization on each side. All right. Okay. So for the remainder of, of this talk, we're going to be starting to talk through the proof of the perturbation lemma. I don't think we're going to get through all of it, um, just given how long it's taken us to get through this bit. Um, okay. 
So um, I'm going to skip over the third board and go straight onto the fourth board so we can leave the, the statement of the perturbation lemma up there. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, working in the context of the statement of the perturbation lemma, so with all the definitions there, um, we begin by proving uh, the, following, the following statements. Okay, so one... <clears throat> that we have delta H A uh, is equal to A H delta is equal to A minus delta. Uh, two, that the one is inverse thing, that that is equal to one plus uh, A H uh, and one minus H delta inverse is equal to one plus H A. And then three, <clears throat> A I P A is, uh, whoops, plus, plus A D M. Um, nope, not yet plus dm a is equal to g minus f times one plus a dm plus dm a. Okay, so let's start with one. So, um, so a is equal to one minus um, let me double check. Uh, yep. So A is equal to one minus delta H inverse delta, right? So that means that one minus delta H uh, times A is just equal to delta, right? Uh, which proves uh, that a minus delta, just by rearranging this equation, is equal to uh, delta H A. Okay. So for the other inequality in one, we can write the expression delta H delta. We can rewrite that um, just by uh, like so, right? So I think you might have said inequality in one. You mean the other equality. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The other equality in in one, right? Um, so uh, proving this and this. Now we're proving this and this. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we can just rewrite this like like so, uh, and then multiply on on the left on both sides by uh, one minus delta h inverse, right? Um, so. 1 minus delta H inverse uh, delta H. <clears throat> yep, uh, delta H. Yep, and then uh, 1 minus delta H inverse delta. Uh, and then this goes away, so we just get the delta there. Um, and then, well, this thing is A. And then, so is so is this thing over here? Uh, which proves the the second part of of that equality in uh, in one. Okay, so uh, for two, um, for that we just need to we need to just work out what these you know see see if we get. If when we compose these maps, that we get one, right? Um, so I'll do I'll do one of them. The rest proceed in the same way. So we get uh, the composition of one plus a h and one minus delta h. Okay, so that's equal to one plus a h minus <clears throat> minus delta h. 
uh, minus a h delta h, right? Um, then we're going to use what we've just learnt in in part one, right? So we get one plus a h minus delta h um, minus a minus a minus delta h, and then we'll these terms just cancel and we end up with one, right? And then similarly, you can show that uh, composing the other way also gives you one, and then you do exactly the same thing. So that's proving proving this part here. So we've got this, that's proving this part here, and then you can do exactly the same thing and prove that part here, right? Um, for three, let's move over well, back to the back to the first board. So for three, um, we're just going to calculate. Start with the with the left hand side and calculate, and see see where we go. Um, so a d m plus d m a plus a i p a. Okay, um, so we can we know we've got this homotopy equivalence um, involving the composition IP. So so let's use that. So we have a d m plus d m a plus uh, a, and then we've got this thing in here. So that is equal to one plus uh, d m h plus h d m and get an a out the back there right so these two are equal um okay uh and then we're going to group everything by trying to bring either a d m out the front or d m a out the back right so so we can just write this as d m a d m there uh and then one plus uh H A, right? So that's coming from, so this uh, H A is coming from uh, oh, sorry, yeah, that H A is coming from, from here. Um, and then uh, 1 plus A H there, and then we bring the D M A out the back there, so doing the same thing again. And then we're left over with with an a squared at the end here. Right. Um, okay, uh, and then well, we can uh, use. So now we're going to use uh, so using two here. We can write this as a d m one minus h delta inverse plus. Uh, one minus delta h inverse d m a plus a squared. <clears throat> um, okay, and then we're gonna so this we've got this isomorphism now, so we can we can start factorizing and introducing this uh, this thing. So <clears throat> um, we're gonna pull. Uh, one plus a h out the front, and that leaves us with well, uh, that can leave us with uh, a minus delta h a in there d m. So I've just brought the I've brought the, uh, the a in into that bracket um, plus d m a minus a h delta plus a minus delta h a a minus a H delta um, and then also out the back then we've got a, a one plus uh, H a here right 
Okay. Um, uh, then you can then show by, uh, I think here that I'm applying. Uh, so, okay. Yep. So applying, applying one, uh, and then canceling, canceling the terms we get. Um, this, this actually simplifies down to one plus a H, uh, Delta DM plus, uh, DM Delta plus Delta squared, uh, one plus H A. <clears throat> um, and then where well, we can, we can rewrite this thing as, uh, one plus a H, uh, DM plus Delta squared, uh, whoops, minus DM squared one plus H a, um, but then this thing is just, well, this thing is just, F, uh, sorry, this thing is just G and this thing is F right. And we're assuming, uh, that, uh, F minus G is in the, um, is inside the, so assuming that, uh, G minus F, sorry, is in this thing. Um, so we can pull all that out the front, uh, which gives us, uh, G minus F, um, one plus a H, uh, one plus a H a, um, and then multiplying this thing out and using the fact that we're working with a strong deformation retract. So H squared is, is zero gives us what we are finally after, which is this. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, right. So let's keep moving on. Um, onto the second board now. Uh, so, okay. So what do we need to show, right? Um, so a first thing we need to show, um, we need to show that L DL prime. So with that new DL prime there is uh, linear factorization of G, right? So that means showing IE that DL prime is squared is equal to G. Um, we also need to show that B, um, I prime is actually a morphism of linear factorizations. So, so by that, I mean, I mean, it's obviously S linear, right? But we need to show that it can, uh, it can, it commutes with the differential. Um, so that means that that thing is equal to the new differentials, that is. Right. Uh, and then we need to show the same thing for the P prime. So this thing is also a morphism. Well, you want, you want I prime and P prime to be R linear, right? Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. No, we only, we are only, we're only worried about the deformation retract being over S, right? So, so these just need to be S linear maps. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, and then, so the no other thing we need to show, so, okay, we need to show that P prime I prime is equal to the identity. Um, and, uh, finally E, right. We need to show that, that H is indeed, is indeed a homotopy. So H, H satisfies. So the new H satisfies. Uh, I, IP 
minus one is equal to h prime. Okay, um, and we probably don't have, <laughs> when we definitely don't have enough time to run through that uh, that now. Um, so I think we can probably tick off tick off D. D is pretty easy. Um, so for for D, right? Uh, P prime I prime. Well, that's equal to P A. Whoops. P plus uh, P A H plus I plus H A I, right? Uh, and then, well, that is equal to um, <clears throat> okay. Yep. So we get we get P we get P composed with I. So we get we get one, right? And then when we get uh, when we do this multiplication, we're assuming that H I is equal to uh, zero. When we do this multiplication, we're assuming that P H is equal to zero. Um, and when we do this multiplication, we're assuming that H squared is equal to zero. All of this is going into the, the fact that the original deformation retract was strong. So we end up with, um, with what we want for D. So, so we can tick off, uh, D that's done. Um, Okay, uh, for so maybe we'll also go for a, and then and then maybe we'll need a need a stop. So um, let's go back over again to the fourth board. Um, so so in this case, we're trying to show that DLs the new DL so DL prime squared is equal to to just G, right? So DL prime squared. Um, so, okay, so what is that? That's DL plus um, PAI squared. Um, well, then we can expand this bracket, right? So we get F um, plus DL PAI plus PAI DL plus PA. I P A I yeah um, <clears throat> okay uh, and then well we'll keep these these first parts the same that's terrible okay. Um, and then we can apply, well, three from, from what we showed before, right? So that's going to give us plus, um, so to this part here, that's going to give us plus P uh, G minus G1 minus F1 um, times 1 plus AH plus HA, uh, and then all of that minus ADM minus DMA, right? And then we also get the I out the other side. Um, <clears throat> now, what's happened here? So, uh, why is that gone? Um, Hmm. Sorry, I'm s struggling to follow my own notes. Um, I'm struggling to follow the brackets. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, 
So we have, oh, this is a bit messy, so I'll rewrite this. So G times one minus F times one there. Uh, and then around this whole outside thing, we have a matching set of, of brackets there, right? So have a product here and then subtracting two things. But where did the... there? Sorry? Uh, that's all A in the square brackets. That's what you're saying. Uh, that's all of this. A, P, A, I, P, R, A. Um, right. I look back at the first board. It says ADM plus DMA plus IPA. A, I, P, A is that stuff. And then we are... We're taking the IPA in the middle and writing it as right over there, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, I'll write down the next line in my notes, which I'm sort of suddenly struggling to, to justify. Um, apparently, I thought it was clear enough. Uh, so apparently this is equal to uh, P G times one minus F times one A H plus H A minus A D M minus D M A. Uh, which seems wrong well, well that one term will contribute p i g minus f mm -hmm. uh, p i is one and g, g minus f is an s so that's just g minus f uh, and then you've got an oh maybe you switch the f to the g at the beginning and then it's correct Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I did. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then that, so, so then that would, yeah. So exactly what, what Dan said. Uh, so that would, uh, this would end up coming out the front and then we'd end up with a, with a, these two swapping here. Cool. Um, okay, cool. Um, uh, and then, okay. <laughs> and then, um, so G1, uh, and then we're going to just sort of pull out, uh, so we're going to factorize out PA uh, on the left wherever we can, right? So that's going to give us um, IDL um, plus, uh, so that's coming from here, sorry, from here, uh, plus G minus F um H I <clears throat> um, uh, yep minus uh, D M I and then you set a bracket so this is going to have an A I out, out the back so this is going to be D L uh, P plus G minus one minus F1 pH minus P DM. That gives us an A out right there. Um, okay, and then, well, this thing ends up as zero, right? So, um, so why exactly is that? Uh, well, HI is zero. Uh, oh, yep. Yep. But I don't know about PADMI. Um, Oh, I is a morphism of complexes, so that's P-A-I. 
Yep. Yeah. So we can we can swap these, right? So this is this can be uh, D M I. Yeah. Right, and then that cancels, and All then right. this can be P D L. Yeah. Um, zero, zero. Uh, we don't want to swap them both. So then this ends up, this whole thing ends up as zero. Um, and so does this. So we're just left over with uh, equal to G1. Okay. Um, nice. And I think that's enough perturbation lever for today. <laughs> what does it all mean, Ron? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. That Yeah, I think like this proof it's like the most impressive result and the most like unimpressive <laughs> frustrating proof like i don't know it seems like the the whole like genius bit of the proof is like it's stuffed in the statement of the theorem right like if you just said if right. we're given a deformation retract and a small perturbation then there exists a small perturbation um then there exists a strong deformation retract between these two complexes and you you made whoever was proving it figure this bit out. Like that's the actual content of like, you know, mm. why this is interesting. It's just sort of like the way it's stated, it's just yeah, I don't know. 